we spend a third of our lives sleeping. Uh, so in, you, if you die when you're 80, you probably have spent 26 years of your life sleeping. And if you're like from Spain, like I do, you probably spend half of your life sleeping because of siestas. <laughs> so today I'm gonna be talking about how we can actually take advantage of these sleeping hours, how we can actually use technology to engineer our dreams and to enhance memory and also well-being. Human-computer interaction has traditionally focused on using technology in a conscious manner, during wakefulness, and also through vision, audio, or haptics. However, in our daily life, a lot of our decision-making, a lot of the behaviors that, that we take into account, are the result of unconscious processes rather than rational decision-making. And actually, a lot of it is influenced by smell. We can actually smell happiness and fear. Not only dogs can do that, we can actually also do it. The problem is that we're not really trained to do it, and therefore, most of the times, we remain unaware of it. You probably know this uh, Pavlovian conditioning or classical conditioning. It's this idea that uh, if you, every time that the dog is eating and you have certain food, and you associate uh, the sound of a bell to it, and then you do this process for several times, you're training it. Every time then that you're gonna play that sound, the, the dog is gonna start salivating, it's gonna be craving for that food. So it turns out that if you actually do this with humans during the day, if you have certain stimuli like smell or sound, and then you play back that same trigger while sleeping in a very specific sleep, sleep stage, the memories are consolidated. Not only they're gonna be dreaming about it, but also they are strengthening those memories. So this study, uh, they, what they do is they have people that regularly smoke cigarettes. They go to the sleeping lab, and you can see here with this big nasal mask, and also big olfactometers, and they have people monitoring physiological signals. What they, have, what they do is that they release the scent of the cigarette, followed by a very bad smell. And then it turns out that people unconsciously connect these both ideas, and they actually significantly reduce the amount of cigarettes that they smoke, for the following day, for more or less like half of it, so they actually reduce the amount of cigarettes that they smoke for half of it, and then the following days, they also, this effect still continues, which was insane. When I was looking into this, it's like, we should really, like, trying to have this technology and bring it to the real world. How can we actually deploy this in people's homes? The problem with this is that these amazing studies remain in research labs. And these devices are like up to $100,000, like this big olfactometer that releases scent. And also, of course, it's not really uh, wearable. So the, the, the devices that I've been building here at the Media Lab are devices that are looking into the next generation wearable scent delivery devices that are silent enough, accurate, and also comfortable to be used while sleeping. They also monitor physiological information from your body. Like actually, right now I'm wearing the device. It can be used as a necklace, as a brooch, and the, or as a clip. And then they are controlled through a smartphone application that can release the scent based on the user's preference. So you can control your intensity and the frequency of the scent. And then it monitors heart rate, respiration, and it can also be coupled with brain activity sensors as well as electrodermal activity, etc. Then when you go to sleep, you can just simply put it in the sleep holder. We've currently conducted the, uh, studies with 40 subjects. It's really the first time I've seen a study that they take it into the wild. So participants took the device uh, to their place, to their home, and we've shown how participants improve their sleep quality when using the device with the scent in comparison with uh, placebo. In this case, which is like smell of water, so odorless scent. And then this is the control condition where they didn't have the scent, they just had the scent of water. Um, you can see how in all the cases, the majority of people reported no changes and subjective sleep in comparison to a typical night. Of course, there's like a little bit of everything. Some people improve, some people decrease. But what is really interesting is how in contrast, when you have a scent, the number of people reporting improvement is much higher than in the control group. So this is the total of people in the study, 100% of the people, and you can see how actually a lot of them improve their mood the following morning, their sleep quality, the time to fall asleep also decreased, then the deep sleep, also like the, the perceived rest, and finally the content of the dreams was 
way more positive. And actually, we had people that had nightmares, and it was really interesting to see how, even for those people, that, that worked. And this is just simply using the device that I have right now. Um, so we've looked into different applications to improve sleep quality, reduce insomnia, change the content of the dreams, and altering your mood the following day. Um, and we're currently looking into targeted memory reactivation. We've also done a study, a pilot study, with a person that had post-traumatic stress disorder. We've looked, we've looked into applications related to creativity. And finally, we're going to start a study the following week about sleep learning and using SEND for language learning. Feel free to keep in touch, and you can also check out our website, engineeringdreams.net. Thank you.